Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. We're going to continue on with our pressure and reflection paradigms, if you will, because I think this will go a long way to help everybody understand. You know, so much misinformation out there, half-truths and exaggeration, and just out-and-out -out lies, that I think if we get things uh, simplified, get it placed in the categories, and then when we read something, or see something, or hear something, we can place it in one of these two categories and then get a better understanding of what we're up against. So keeping our pressure and reflection paradigms in focus, that's what we want to do. Let's look at treatment. So we have three kinds, basically. Helmholtz, membrane, or four kinds, I'm sorry. Helmholtz, membrane, diaphragmatic, and perforated. So let's go through those th uh, four types of absorption. Because with pressure waves, everything below 100 hertz, we're not going to diffuse. I get calls a lot of time from people, well, they want to build a diffuser that will uh, spread energy out at 40 hertz. Well, <laughs> you're, you're a diffuser that spreads energy out at 100 hertz is three feet deep. So what are you going to think about 40 hertz? Six feet, eight foot deep? Well, nobody's going to build a diffuser to do that. And I'm not so sure how well it would even work. So let's stay focused on the four main treatment types that we, we deal with low frequency pressure. Hemholtz. Good technology, good tuning technology, but not good for managing a whole broadband array of issues. They're limited in frequency response and they're limited in performance. They just don't get a lot. They do work, but they don't get a lot. Uh, I, I talked to a gentleman the other day who built over 40 Hemholtz resonators. So he's chasing frequency and modal issues throughout the room, and he's building Hemholtz and putting them all over the place. So I suggested he go to a broadband absorber, eliminate a lot of that, keep the Hemholtz because we can use them for fine tuning. But let's start out with a broadband approach. Let's reduce everything across a wider frequency range, and then we can use Hemholtz to fine tune. Membrane's the cousin to diaphragmatic. If you look at the formulas for diaphragmatic, you see that the density of the cabinet, the depth of the cabinet, the density of the front wall, the fill material that you use inside the cabinet, these are all factors in contributing to the resonant frequency or how low the unit goes. Membrane uses less dense materials. So yes, they work at certain frequencies that they're designed to work, but once again, they don't get enough. It's all about getting enough because we don't have a lot of room in our small rooms. Most rooms don't even have room for treatment. So any treatment type that we put in the room must work well for every square foot of treatment surface area. Membrane just doesn't do that. Diaphragmatic, that's what we use, most powerful low frequency technology there is. Per square foot, you can't beat it. You can't beat our uh, diaphragmatic absorption especially with our carbon technology on the inside. So the cabinet depth controls the frequency that how low it goes to, but the material inside the cabinet can controls the rate of absorption, okay? So you get a nice, steady, smooth performance as you move up in frequency. Perforated, our CPA, you can see that on, in the shop section of the website, product 14, I believe. But a six, six and a half inch deep unit, and it has a perforated face. So it can also work for pressure. It can also work over here for reflections, okay? So we could classify this over here too. So these are our four types of treatment for pressure. And reflection, we have foam. That's an open cell uh, foam technology versus closed cell, which is what you're sitting on uh, in your chair or your couch, that's closed cell. It's more for support, rigidity, and stuff like that. Open cell foam works on something called velocity, right? That's airflow. So air moving over the surface creates friction, energy transformation to heat, we get absorption. So you could think of reflections, middle and high issues, as using velocity treatment, and pressure, of course, using those four types there. So pressure, reflection, and these are our treatment types. You can't use foam to deal with pressure. You can't use diaphragmatic to deal with reflections.
So you have to stay in your lane. You have to stay in your category. You have to work with the treatment that is assigned to the problem that you have in the room. Okay. So with reflections, we want the air to move over the surface. That's why open cell foam is so nice. It's economical to build and manufacture, and you can control the rate and level of absorption. Both of these are all concerned with rate and level. So let's talk about that, all right? The rate of absorption is how much it gets per frequency. So we do 40, 50, 60. So the level is how low it goes. The rate is how much it improves on performance as it moves up in frequency. You can see this in our ACDA series here. You can see it in the graph. All right, for reflection, same principles apply, rate and level, and you need a very smooth performance, as you can see with our foam technology here. So notice the red line. Notice how smooth it is. That's critical for middle and high frequency. You can't have any spatial irregularities in frequency response. Because middle frequencies is where our voice is. And we're very good, you know, detecting subtle changes in voice. Uh, not so much music, maybe, but tonal variations in music, but definitely with voice. Even the inexperienced that are not used to dealing with acoustics can tell, you know, increases in uh, changes in tone, timbre of voice. So rate and level is critical for pressure management and for reflection management. So these are our treatment types for both. We're going to talk more as we move forward with this discussion. But once again, pressure and reflection. Let's keep that in mind as we move through this year and through these videos. Hope this helps. Thank you. Hi everyone, Dennis again. I wanna walk you through the room form process. So go to the home page and click on the room analysis tab. Once you get to the room analysis tab, then it's gonna ask you for information. So left side, start my room analysis, orange button. Click on that. And once we get to that, it's gonna ask you just six or eight things dimensions structure composition things like that fill out that now here's the most important thing about that part you can include up to six pictures so stand in the middle of the room take pictures of each wall and take a picture of the floor and the ceiling and attach it to this form okay once you do that you'll be prompted to schedule an appointment in our electronic calendar. Go ahead and do that. The calendar automatically adjusts for your time zone. Please call on the scheduled time. We do not call these numbers. So we're very, very busy. We want to make sure that everybody gets taken care of. So it's your obligation to call at the scheduled time. And then we'll discuss your room and I'll give you three different room resolutions to consider. All righty, hope this helps. Thank you.